All right, I think it's time. So uh, let's not let's not run out of time. Although I have very little to talk about, and I hope this to be a uh, conversation, as the track description says. I also tried to get uh, Daniel Schmidt over here through Google Hangouts, but he's not responding to my Google Hangout. I mean, I've sent it to him via Twitter. I wanted to get all the experimental module stakeholders in here. So we have people from Migrate, we have people from BigPipe, we have people from Layouts, we have people from Settings Tray. Um, we don't explicitly have people from media, I think, although there's some uh, experimental stuff involved there as well. Uh, because I think it's interesting what were the experiences of these different projects and where do we go forward? So this is, we have experimental modules, now what? I'm uh, Gabor Hoichi on Twitter and Gabor Hoichi on uh, Drupal.org with accents. So first I wanted to ask a few questions on who used Drupal 8 a year before its release. That's quite a few people. Okay, that's cool. Pre-release Drupal 8, nice. Uh, who uses dev, alpha, or beta contributed modules? Not stable, almost everyone, okay. It's a room of like 40, 50 people, everyone, okay. Who uses core experimental modules? Less, but not so much less. In production? Only a couple of you, okay. So that's interesting because the core experimental modules are in many ways the same as contrib dev modules. You're just not getting the warning for the contrib dev modules, you're getting the warning for core experimental modules. Interesting. So, um, so yeah, so let's start with why do we even have them or why do we think we need them to, to exist in the first place? So I think what we did in prior Drupal releases is we've had a stable core branch like Drupal 7 or Drupal 6 or 5 or whatever. And that was stable and we usually did not touch it. We did not introduce new features. We did not make any major changes unless required by uh, critical issues or security fixes or whatever. And at the same time, we've been working on the next core branch and, and plus one, seven, eight, whatever was the what, plus one, two, n. So when we've had Drupal 7 stable supported, we've been working on Drupal 8 for several years, and that was unstable. So if you used the Drupal 8 the year before it was released, we, we were still making big changes. Um, if even earlier, we were making huge changes. So it was not feasible for everyone, or it was not e economical for everyone to use Drupal 8, that's Drupal 8 at that stage. It was very comfy for us to do because we've had a stable version that people could use, download, and enjoy, and we've had a thriving contrib ecosystem on that version. And then we could redefine Drupal in the next version however much we wanted. And we did very huge changes in Drupal 8, so that this model served us well to be able to do those huge changes. The problem is that we did make those huge changes so that a lot of things changed and people were not ready and they were, did not have the opportunity to go through with those changes and they got all of those changes at once like a big uh, all-in-one package. And there was a lot of effort to, to train the new people that were still ongoing here. Um, there was a lot of effort to build migration paths between the two that's still ongoing, still not done. Um, and there was just this tension between the two as well. So what we wanted to do, and also, also generally it took a long time to build the new version. For Drupal 8 it took uh, more than four years. And we were building things that were not necessarily validated by the world. We were building things that we thought would be nice, but we didn't know if they are gonna be good or not. Uh, I've been involved with the multilingual initiative and we did a lot of conceptual building so we like made up something and we were like, maybe this is gonna be good for the market, we don't know. And I'm, I still enjoy hearing these validations here. I've been to the media summit and I've heard the validation that it actually works, which is kind of nice. But we've not been in touch with the market for four for, for years to validate what we're working on actually makes sense and is useful for people to use on the site. So what we decided to do instead is to 
instead of working on a separate unstable version, try to innovate within our stable version to introduce new features, to build in new capabilities. But turns out we cannot do that fast enough. So we wanted to release new improvements to people uh, at least twice a year. So we have scheduled releases that come out every six months. And what we are used to do in the unstable versions is we have years to figure out what we want to do. We have a proof of concept. We figure out the, the flaws of the proof of concept. We write some, uh, some tests for that, and then we rework it, and then refactor it, and then, okay, now we have a better version, and then we, uh, then we start with that again, and then we do this process two or three times. We did that with the configuration system in Drupal 8. We rewrote it two or three times. We did that with some of the multilingual code for, um, for config translation, for content translation. So we've had that time to do that, um, do that processing ourselves, but if we need to release twice a year, and we need to give people the chance to use the new stuff, we don't have that luxury to like, rewrite everything. So what we decided to do is make space for us within the stable release and have a separate playground of unstable things within that stable branch so we don't need to deal with building a branch, uh, building a totally different branch that's unstable. And this allows us to support our stable code, and it also allows us to put out code that's not yet stable, but we would like to have it be stable soon, maybe in six months, maybe in a year. But we are giving it some time so it gets the kind of feedback that we need. So instead of building disconnected from the market in a totally different branch that nobody can use for four years, we put this uh, in the faces of everyone in core, it listed in the modules, and we hope to get the kind of feedback that helps us make it stable and we, helps us make it move into core. So the way we decided to place them in core is we have a big set of stable modules that are included in core and they are in different groups of modules. And then we have a set of experimental modules that are in alpha. We have a set of experimental modules that are in beta and RC. And they live alongside in core in one package. We deliver them in one package. So the way we differentiate them is we put the, all the experimental modules in core experimental, and we put all the rest of the modules in different stable um, packets. And the key thing with introducing an experimental module is we eventually want to have it as a stable feature so people can actually use that. So one of the more important things that we set as a requirement for new experimental modules is for not just them to stay somewhere, but to have a plan to move forward to beta RC and then stable. So we wanted to have a way to experiment with new things, put them in core, put them in, in users' faces, but also a way to tell what's still left to do and this is a part of a requirement to add a new experimental module in core, is to define this plan and to have this plan available, and also to have a timeline for that plan to be completed. And the timeline is probably the most interesting or most uh, risky part that we need to talk about today. So we put these non-stable modules in core. We're working on them for them, hopefully, to get stable um, at the end. And if they don't become stable by the timeline that we hope to, for them to become stable, they risk being removed from core. So if they don't move forward on the yellow brick road, then um, they have a chance to uh, get removed from core. So where are we with all of this process? So let me try to get, to see if Stefan joined us. No, he did not. That's sad. So where are we with the process? So we've been introducing and advancing with experimental modules from Drupal 8.0.0. The first experimental module that we've had is inline form errors. Uh, it's in core. It, this is still in alpha, so these are the same colors that I used before. Inline form errors is an alpha core experimental module. And it's, it received a lot of great work recently, thankfully. We've also added Migrate Drupal and Migrate Drupal UI in 8.1.0, I think. And we advanced since then the Migrate module to beta, so it now has a stable API that you can build off of. But the rest of Migrate Drupal and the Migrate Drupal UI are still alpha. 
modules, we've added place block and settings tray in Drupal 8.2, which let you have an easy way to add blocks on the page and to configure blocks on the site and hopefully for more, con more contributed module integrations allow you to uh, do all kinds of other fun things, work with workflows or um, web forms uh, in the settings tray. We've added date time range as well in 8.2.0, uh, which lets you set ranges for dates, surprisingly. And we've added content moderation in 8.2.0 and all of these still remain alpha experimental modules. And then we refactored some of the content moderation module in 8.3.0 and created the workflows module that now the content moderation module relies on, and all of them remain alpha. And we've added the field layout and discovery modules. These are two modules that um, are new, alpha modules in 8.3.0, and that's where we are right now. So we keep adding experimental modules and moving forward with some of them. The most successful module so far in the process was BigPipe, that reached out of the experimental module range and is now a stable module. I think it had a very lucky time because it was small, self-contained, not providing an API for others and had very little, well, had no settings. So it was building on what Drupal already know about your data. Um, and the rest we found all kinds of interesting difficulties with. Um, however, we are also planning for 8.4.0 and we plan to add a demo installation profile that may be experimental and a demo theme that may be experimental and a media library that may be experimental. So when you look at this picture, I think you, you may understand the anxiety in the Drupal release management team because we keep adding all these exper alpha experimental things and we are not really moving them forward. We are like, if we get Drupal 8.4.0 with this, then we've spent um, more than two years working on things and we haven't been stabilizing what we've been working on. So the way we are trying to get people to try these out is we created a core experimental package in core. All these modules are listed there. It's not very ideal because they're, they're not grouped by functionality, but we thought it's more important to group them by stability. And when you actually want to enable them, we tell you that these are experimental and we ask you if you're sure you wish to enable experimental modules. We warn you three, sorry, three ways. So we warn you in the title, we warn you in a warning message, and then we warn you in the list of the, of the warning messages. These are experimental modules, really, really experimental modules. Are you sure, are you sure? And if you're really sure, then you install them. And once you're sure and you've installed them, when you go to your status page, we also give you a warning that says, by the way, you have experimental modules. And that may not be the right choice. So, so I guess uh, based on the hands up at the start, we've been very successful scaring people away running experimental modules in production, <laughs> at least people in the room. Um, so that's nice. It's also good because we've been making really big breaking changes. Like if you enable content moderation in 8.2 and you try to update to 8.3, you get a fatal error in your update and there's no way out. There, it's impossible to continue. So um, yeah, so you should not do that on your production sites. Um, so the way to tell which modules are which level of stability is quite obscurely on a documentation page on Drupal.org because we don't have a way to put that on the UI. So as this documentation page, these are all the modules we have. Um, so the things that I wanted to call out here are um, BigPipe and inline form errors. So BigPipe is still listed as an experimental module because it was an experimental module up until recently. And it had a deadline um, uh, in 8.3 to be removed and it got stable, so it's not removed. And inline form errors also had a deadline to be removed and we did not remove it because there was a lot of, because there's a lot of great work going into it and, we, uh, and, the, and the release managers decided to give the module another chance. Um, the text on the bottom says that the, this deadline is the, what we uh, assume by default and then committer discretion allows committers to um, postpone that deadline. But the really scary thing is the, is, well, not this is the really scary thing. Uh, not this is not yet the really scary thing. So we also have the migrate suite, which is another special case because they don't have a deadline. 
because we consider Migrate to be an essential part of what Drupal needs to do because we want Drupal 8 to be um, a system that people can migrate to from earlier versions and also from other systems, but this is really for earlier versions. Um, and we don't want to remove that functionality ever, so we consider that, that a key functionality is not going to be removed even though they are experimental for quite a while. But the really scary thing is what's coming up in the next release because workflows has a deadline in the upcoming release, content moderation has a deadline, uh, inline form is going to be having a deadline now, place box, setting strain, daytime range. So, so it's not so it's not just that we that that we have a lot of experimental modules and we may be adding even more in this release. It's also that that two thirds of the existing experimental modules have a deadline in four months or something, beta one, four months. So, um, so it's quite pressing. So that's why we are here today. <clears throat> so, um, so the question is, um, how do we get better? I don't know. Another question is, are experimental modules working out for us? Is this the right tool? Are we doing this right? Should we do something else? Should we figure out some other way to put people, put new features in people's faces. And then, um, and then um, I would also like to hear from all the maintainers of these modules as in terms of how it worked for them. So with this, I would like to open this up for discussion. Can you just, I, I'm Laure. Uh, yeah. I'm one of the provisional uh, framework managers mm -hmm. uh, focused on front end. Uh, I just wanted to ask a uh, clarifying question uh, because it might affect the conversation mm -hmm. about what is the specific reason for the deadline being set for experimental modules? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this, there's multiple reasons. Uh, we, so the reason we put experimental modules in core is because we think that these are great features and we want people to use them in production. But uh, so long as they are experimental, we don't suggest them to be used in production because there may be changes that break their sites. So we want to eventually be able to, to provide them as actual features. And the longer we not do that, the, the worse uh, that becomes. It's also a, a big burden on maintenance to try to figure out the different combinations of these not yet really working modules with each other. Um, although a lot of the bugs that the experimental modules identified were pre-existing bugs in core and not necessarily bugs with the combination of experimental modules. Um, and yeah, I think those are the main reasons, yeah. So the more we have in core, the harder to like shuffle them around and figure out the plan. Yeah, I def it definitely makes sense, but uh, there is also probably other reasons that we should be considering, such as how many experimental modules do we want to have open at the same time, yep. which I don't feel like we've considered as much yet at this point. I don't think we have a number defined. I've invited release managers to this conversation, but we don't have them present. But they would be the, the authority to define that. I think there's a general feeling from release managers that they are not comfortable adding several of them in 8.4 because they already kind of uh, agreed to have media library maybe and uh, the demo stuff, which will be some more. Um, so there's been some debates around new experimental modules for API first, for example, which we discussed and turned, and, and turned out to be better fit for Contrib for now. Um, but then we don't have a number defined. Yeah. And that's true. Yeah, that's just something that I, I found personally very helpful in uh, client work mm -hmm. that we limit the amount of work we take into to be worked at the same time, mm -hmm. and it helps the uh, yeah. first the success rate, like how successful the things mm -hmm. get usually done, because you have more focus on, on a single thing at yeah. at once, and that, but also it uh, adds more speed because if you don't have to try to use, switch context with Juggle multiple different things, things. At once, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for an experimental module to get into core is much less of a requirement than a stable module. So, any feedback from the experimental module maintainers? What they think is the strong and or weak part of the process? How can we improve? Is this the right tool? 
Hey, so I'm Dick. I'm the, uh, the initiative coordinator for the Workflow Initiative. Uh, I think that the experimental module process has been working quite well. Mm -hmm. uh, it has certainly introduced a very, like, a great venue for getting things done quite fast in core. Um, but it's challenging with initiatives that need to change fundamental parts of of core, because things can't necessarily be separated out in an experimental module very easily. Mm -hmm. We of course have the regular core process that we can that we can rely on, but that is still a slow process. Mm -hmm. That hasn't changed a lot recently. Um, so, uh, content moderation, for instance, um, content moderation itself is stable piece of code, but we're surfacing a lot of bugs that has existed for six, eight, ten years in Drupal. Yeah. And content moderation is stable by itself. But we sh we well, when you enable it, you get all of those bugs. You get yeah. all of those bugs. <laughs> so what, what apply, like, what, what constitutes stable for an experimental module? Uh, that is like a, an interesting gray area to me mm -hmm. that, it's, that we've had a lot of challenge with. Um, yeah, Danny, I could not call in, but he, but he faced the similar problems with inline form errors, is that inline form errors surfaces a lot of bugs that were years old, and just, if you enable inline form errors, they are much worse, because now if the error is not displayed at all for a field, like for one of the bugs was that if an element is in a field set that's closed, then the error did not display. And with inline form errors, because the error was on the form element, if you've had a closed field set, you would never mm. see that there was an error. But if you don't have inline form errors enabled, the error is at the top of the form, so who cares if mm. the field set is open or not because you see the error. So it's like, okay, so this is a thing that we need to open the field set for things that have errors, yes. So I think um, initiatives were put in place to really drive change in core. Mm -hmm. um, and, and our initiative is funded, so we have like a stable team that, that works on it. We're very productive. Um, but there is still, and so I think the need, maybe we need to think a little bit harder for initiatives that want to like do deep change in Drupal, like the entity API, the, in, the, in the translation API, on the storage level, mm -hmm. data stuff. I think experimental modules, we don't have an answer to you know, initiatives that want to do great change there. We have mm -hmm. the regular core process, but it's still quite slow and, and it's, not, it's still not um, um, uh, e what am I saying that's wrong here? <laughs> no, that's not wrong. People lined up behind you immediately. So that's what I wanted to say. Now throw to yeah. me. <laughs> Converse. No. Continue conversing. Yeah, I just have for the uh, last point that especially when we get closer to Drupal 9, it becomes more and more the problem because we have to start refactoring our APIs and preparing for Drupal 9. And it's definitely something that we need to figure in the soon near future. Hi, I'm Tim. I'm uh, the co-lead of the Layout Initiative, and I'm responsible for some of those other features that are kind of left to themselves. And that's what I wanted to talk about. In addition to the, the challenges of making uh, sweeping changes in core, uh, the ones that aren't part of like a, a larger uh, focus are just like, we want to solve this one problem in a specific way, um, and not, but it's not stable yet. But they kind of langu it's easier for them to languish, mm -hmm. uh, since they only do one small thing, and there's no larger uh, work being done around that. So I, I worry every time we add a new module uh, that is standalone, um, that is, y they're the ones that have the harder problems hitting their deadlines. Yeah. Uh, so those are the ones that scare me. I don't know if you have any opinions about that. No offense, Ted, since those are all yours. No, I don't have a solution. <laughs> but although one of the tricks that you have, uh, Tim, for, or do you use Tim for, for, for adding new core stuff that's not necessarily a module is you've added services and then it, it's only exposed for Drupal if you enable the experimental module. So it's added as a core service, which on, which on the cursory look looks like a core service in the stable core system, but then you need to enable the experimental module. So it's in a place where it is supposedly gonna be at the end, but until we figure out if it's good or not, you need to enable an exper experimental module to expose the, the feature. I think it's a good trick to like put in something in 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 a, in a it was a new subsystem that you need and uh, expose it as an experimental thing. 
Um, so my name's Ted Bowman. I was working, Ted Bowman, Jupiter.org, I was working on this, or I am working on the settings tray module. Um, so that's the tray that comes out. And uh, place blocks module and trying to get them to look, to act together. I, th I think some of the pain points were one, you know, we're doing a lot of JavaScript in the, um, and this is probably not, that the fact that it was experimental, just that there was a fair amount of JavaScript in the um, module and Java re JavaScript resources as far as developers to review and stuff are pretty limited in the Drupal community, or it seems like to me, but I mean, I'm new to core, so I think that maybe has been a problem for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sort of most of the stuff that after the initial commit of the, of the module for settings to at least, almost all the issues involve some JavaScript. Um, so, and then also we have to write, so we write JavaScript tests for all the stuff that we put in, which um, is great, but also I think we ran into a lot of issues with the JavaScript testing because I think a lot of the advanced JavaScript stuff in Drupal 8 got in before the requirement for JavaScript testing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's true. De -de -de. Yeah. So we're running into a lot of like random errors that just, the, it works and then like the test randomly will fail um, for some people. And then of course that breaks head and it's horrible. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I think the other probably main problem that I see, a general problem is, I don't know if there was a buy-in for the settings trade module in the larger community. I mean, mm -hmm. may, maybe there was, but it wasn't like something like layout where you had a bunch of people already using it and you could say, okay, we're gonna get this into core and it really helps a bunch of stuff in contrib all at once, mm -hmm. or has the potential to. Um, where the settings tray, uh, you know, that wasn't like, okay, if you work in X, Y, and Z contrib, you know, this, let's uh, all work together and do the settings tray. I talked to some people with Panelizer because they have a tray and, you know, they were interested in, once it gets stable, that maybe they'll start using it for part of it. Um, but when it first came out, um, the other problem was trying to get, trying to extract some of it out of the module before it got into stable, which I think was probably a bad idea in hindsight, but um, the idea that the portion of the tray opening up and the portion where the blocks are, you click on them and you, you, you just click anywhere in the site and it opens up a form. Um, my thought at first was to get that tray separated out so Contrib could start using it um, without the whole blocks functionality. Uh, I don't know if I'd do that again if, if I was gonna do it. And I think a lot of it had to do with like getting JavaScript uh, maintainers to look at stuff. And um, uh, I've worked in Contrib, like so this was my first big thing in core and I worked in Contrib a whole lot more and of course things just happen faster in Contrib. Uh, code quality is better in core for sure, at least for compared to my Contrib modules, though I think they're all right. <laughs> I think they're pretty good, but they're better in core. Um, it's a thing we are hearing a lot from Tim Millwood as well in the workflow, yeah. That it's... Are they expected things to grow much faster in core? Yeah. And I know all of these things that turned up from the other existing bugs. I know a long time ago there was a thought of having branches for Drupal development, Drupal mm -hmm. 8 development. I don't mm -hmm. think that ever um, happened. Well, obviously it didn't happen. But, um, you know, if we had a settings tray, a settings tray because it's not really integrated with a bunch of other stuff like content workflow or content moderation might be, I feel like that could have developed in a branch pretty easily. But I'm not sure if we actually would have got commits faster because it's the same committers, so it's not necessarily like that, that would help much because there's only X number of committers. Um, so I, I don't know, I guess if it was, if I was to do it again, if it was all up to me, which is not, I mean, I probably would have considered doing something in Contrib a whole lot more, working in Contrib more, and then trying to get it in. Um, mm -hmm. Place blocks is simpler. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the other thing is like, how do we like promote this? I, now the web form module is using settings tray, has an option to, but it's also like I want to go out, I'm just now going out and trying to like get Contrib to use it, but it's obviously, you can't have Contrib use it and be the only, it has to be like a fallback, because it's, it's, uh, it's experimental, obviously, so. Um, if I would say, uh, is whether it's a success or not really probably depends on whether uh, the people working on it, me and the people working on it get it done by July, the end of July. If it is, then I feel like it was success. success. If it, we don't, then it wasn't, so. 
Still I, to be seen. I think we will, hopefully. Yeah. But if anybody wants to get involved and help, it would be a whole lot. <laughs> it, it, we could use help. Basically, basically, like we could use help. That would be great. So anybody who's wants to get involved in core development, maybe you're already involved. Um, yeah, talk to me after this session. Yeah, I think it's interesting that we are finding a lot of these auxiliary problems, like for JavaScript testing, but then those are problems that we would want to solve anyway yeah. in some way, and then we turn up a set of people who are interested in that and, and are starting to work on it. So it's in one way, it's slowing things down. In another way, it's raising problems that are ideally solved as well. I think I'll, I was wanted to mention this. What I would have done in my situation differently, I would have spent, you know, like probably a quarter of my time trying to promote it mm -hmm. um, versus uh, like take the time out I was coding it and say, okay, I need to really dedicate a quarter of this time to actually like saying, hey, here it is, everybody, and you could help out with it, um, which I'm, this call right now to do that. But in general, like it would have been better for me to do that way back when. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, Mike Ryan. Mike, great. <laughs> hey. um, so, well, I was already going to say it, even though it's already been covered. But you know, there is the the trade-off between developing as a core experimental module versus contrib. Mm -hmm. And hides. In hindsight, I think Migrate could have been uh, baked a little more in Contra before we put it into core. You know, mm -hmm. There's obviously some more um, friction. It, it's a lot easier to develop quickly when you can commit at will. <laughs> yeah. On the other hand, Migrate's a special case. It touched so many parts of core that our, our sandbox was actually a fork of core mm -hmm. rather than a module. Yeah. which complicates things, and, <laughs> and that, that was uh, rather a mess. Um, but apart from that, um, I, I guess I just want to call out um, a particular issue with Migrate that probably doesn't apply to too many other experimental modules, but, um, and that's the fact for the same, the same reason where NA <laughs> for the... Uh, Deadline. for the deadline is that there is no alternative. Mm -hmm. It has to be there. People need it, which yeah. means even though we've been alpha, people are really using it, and we, we could not simply ignore BC. Uh, alpha, yeah. alpha says we can ignore BC, but in practice, no. We, we, we had to be very careful about the changes we've made and um, if we had to do a hard BC break, be very clear and do, do the best we could to help people make the transition. Yeah, that's a very good point. When I was preparing for my session, I was trying to find the similar patterns with different experimental modules and they all have, they are, most of them are their own special flower of what they've uh, turned up and found and how they mm -hmm. solved the problem. And for Migrate, it's, it's very true that we've got a lot of feedback from people when we change some things that were not, not backwards compatible anymore, and they were like, but I have my mm -hmm. contributed distro, I have a migration path built on top of this, and why are you changing this? Because now it's there, and we were like, but it's an alpha thing. And they were like, no, but it's the only thing we have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and another thing I, I want to point out is just even though there are those hard labels, alpha, beta, RC, mm -hmm. um, which looks like a step function, it, in reality, you really have to gradually um, raise your thresholds in terms of what you allow in terms of BC breaks. Mm -hmm. if, if you're on the verge of going from alpha to beta, not, you know, you've got to start saying, okay, we cannot have a major BC break now. We can't to completely redesign things. Yeah. You know, you, you just have to incrementally um, make your B, whatever BC changes you have to make narrower in scope, smaller, smaller impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good yeah. point, very good point. It's uh, Dick here again. So I just wanted to address the productivity question and discussion we had earlier mm -hmm. when it comes to core committers. Mm -hmm. um, so I think some issues that we've faced mm -hmm. um, 
was had to be pushed down f further down the line um, because of core committers are very busy. <laughs> And I'm not, I'm not pointing any fingers here at all. I think they're doing a great, great job. Mm -hmm. And it's improved tremendously over the past uh, year and year and a half. But I think when there is a, an, an initiative that's just sort of show a great deal of commitment, uh, and we have this great experimental module process, perhaps part of the solution could be like core committer access to your own experimental module. Um, that it, it poses some great governance issues, and, and I'm not saying that just because you show up with a pile of cash, you get core committer access. Um, I'm not at all suggesting that. Um, what I'm saying is that there's been issues, many issues that we've marked as workflow initiative critical that's been sitting in the RTBC queue for three, four weeks, mm -hmm. and it's greatly you know, had an impact on our productivity, mm -hmm. which is why 8.3 in, in, in some respect turned out to be this big you know, change migration issue for, for content moderation. Some of that could have been addressed with, okay, we've got a separate experimental module, uh, let's give a, a, an initiative team that has you know, long-term commitment, let's give them some autonomy over that mm -hmm. experimental module perhaps. Uh, to to increase that productivity, um, lots of governance issues around that. I'm well aware of that, but perhaps that could be could be something. Um, we've added more core committers recently, but we mm -hmm. still rely on very very few framework type core committers. Yep. That hasn't changed at all in the past, I would say, two years almost. Um, and and for us, where we try to make deep changes into Drupal. It doesn't matter if we have more core committers, if there's still just one or two framework type core committers that we rely on. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, this has, has been a very active concern for the core committer team, the, the decreased capacity. So that there's not many uh, framework managers, and there's also a decreased capacity of existing framework managers because of just human life events. Um, so that's a, that's a concern, and, they, and, and there's, there were some attempts to fill that gap, but they did not work out so far, mm. unfortunately. Yeah. But it's definitely on the radar, yeah. Yeah. It could, yeah, I think experimental module core committer access could be something to explore, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I, I think that sounds terrifying. I don't think anyone should give me core access. Um, <laughs> uh, so I wanted to talk, uh, uh, Mike mentioned the letting things uh, kind of grow and contrib first. Um, one thing that you had didn't talk about, the kind of the first experimental module in a sense was Views. Mm -hmm. um, Views mm -hmm. was a module that was moved straight basically into Core mm -hmm. during the dev cycle. And that was done in a, in a sandbox as a clone of Core, mm -hmm. not as a module. And that really helped us um, track Core changes a lot better. Um, we had to bribe a test bot maintainer though to set things up so that we could actually like m track Core closely. Um, so there are some infrastructure changes that could be made to make that more feasible. Um, and then you do have commit access to all of core uh, in a way. And then you, they would only have to review the merges later. So th I think there's a lot we can do with Git uh, there that would help. Um, and I've now completely forgotten the other point I was going to make. Yeah, the so. reason, th so there was discussion on having core benches also for things. And that was also in the context of the existing core committers having commit access to branches only, not the uh, initiative right. reads, because there's if we are if we are concerned that there's framework manager and uh, core committer resourcing problem, then reviewing those huge merges is is an even worse problem than trying to review some of these smaller yeah. smaller changes that are still quite big. And, and the point would like go there, so yeah. it's recorded. So a point with experimental modules, though, is to put it in front of people, right? And not do it separately yeah. in a sandbox. Yeah. Uh, and I really like that idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I also like your idea, because that, that turned out to be really successful. But like to find that balance, find uh, balance, putting things in front of people versus productivity, that's a hard problem, I think. Yeah, uh, I still think we could solve it with infrastructure. Like the, uh, the subtree split of core just started today. Like you can now pull in single packages of parts of core. Core could easily pull in um, parts or like on the fly from other other sandboxes and whatnot. 
Um, I did the other point Dick made about framework managers. Field, uh, the layout initiative would be much further along if it weren't for that bottleneck, except for the part where the reviews given by those framework managers were invaluable. Um, mm -hmm. And if we had been able to commit things um, without their review, uh, we would have moved faster, but we'd be in a worse place. Um, you would be moving on an, on an architecture that then you would later right. need to change We would be going very again. quickly in the wrong direction. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is pointless. not really progress, in my opinion. Um, yeah. And honestly, you know, the, uh, there are certain, only certain few people in core that can really understand the entire weight and scope of a change. Um, so I, I, while I, I wish it could move faster, I respect the bottleneck. That's why it's hard to recruit people for that role. I had, uh, before I was asked to become a commuter, I had a pretty interesting discussion with Alex, Alex Pot, um, about the, like how do we manage the initiatives as uh, maintainers of the software. And uh, one of the things that we both agreed on was that uh, we would like to be more involved in a little bit earlier on the issues than at the committing phase, when the committing phase would be easier and it would become more productive for the initiatives because if they could get the feedback earlier on than at the pa patch phase. And uh, yeah, my personal opinion is like once we can go towards that direction, maybe like some sandboxes or other things would be more helpful. But having like um, this initiatives working in isolation in a, different project pages would just make the situation worse because of like reviewing uh, huge chunks of code is just not productive at all. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Wim. I maintain the Big Pipe module together with uh, Fabian. Um, I think the reason the Big Pipe module had a easier time to become stable as an experimental module is simply because it doesn't have a UI, it doesn't have configuration, which is kind of what Gabor mentioned. So it is kind of the only one in the list, I think, like that. So mm -hmm. if you have an experimental module that you want to propose that is like that, I think you have an easier time. Maybe we need to favor those kinds of modules because they can um, come to fruition faster, but then at the same time, of course, modules like uh, workflows and content moderation are super important, but obviously those cannot live without UI, without data storage and so on. So BigPipe is kind of exceptionally easy in that way. Uh, we also had the benefit of having worked on both of us on the render system in stabilizing Drupal 8. So we know where the edge cases were that we had to think about. Uh, we were able to write extremely comprehensive test coverage that prevented lots of problems later on. So I think uh, we just got lucky in that sense. Um, but then also from the perspective of, um, I'm also the coordinator for the API First initiative now. Um, and as part of that, we work on the REST module in Drupal Core. The REST module in Drupal Core is marked as stable. Should have been experimental. And should have been experimental. So <laughs> it should have been over there at the top <laughs> above inline form errors. Um, and I think the fact that it is not stable, or well, the fact that it was not marked as experimental, that it was marked as stable inappropriately so, um, means that we shifted the problem of properly integrating all the things to a later point in time, as in Drupal 8, 1, 2, 3, and still ongoing. Because that's roughly what uh, what Dick was getting at um, about uh, the speed and Tim as well. There is a certain like uh, I think Tim put it really well. He said, um, um, "I'm glad things are blocked." Essentially, respect the bottleneck, respect the bottleneck. right? Uh, so basically, respect the bottleneck is equivalent to do not ignore the in the cost of integration and take integrating all the things takes a lot of time. And that's what you're seeing with the workflow initiative. Content moderation itself is stable, but you're surfacing all the integration problems in the different subsystems that you're relying on or exercising that weren't being exercised before. We have the same problem with the rest. The thing is that because you're not yet a stable module with content moderation and workflows, you can still change things. In REST, we have to work extremely hard to not break things, and it's excruciatingly painful. So uh, that's that's the downside. If, if you go with the route of having fewer framework manager reviews and so on. So I would say let's not forget, forget about that because that could be a big downside. Um, I was sort of thinking about the idea of branches again. Um, so I could see for a lot of stuff where it wouldn't work. But if you have a module like block place or settings tray where I think we had one core change in settings tray mm -hmm. um, that was probably needed for other stuff. It seems like branches would work better in that case, but it only really works if you 
um, you know, if, if it's a really encapsulated module, which maybe most of these aren't, maybe they surface other errors that then you really need to fix. Um, but I don't, I don't know if like making a branch and then giving the initiative owner like access to just that branch as long as it only changes something in that, that experimental module folder would be something. The other thing about like, you know, not doing it in the branches to avoid these big chunks of code that would be committed. But for stuff like place block, potentially if it gets into the block module anyways, there will be no place block module, so there will be that end huge uh, code review, I think, because it'll have to, it, it won't be where it is. Mm -hmm. um, some of that's true for setting tray two. I think that was one of the problems with uh, us trying to get some of the, the tray part out of settings tray and into core is it, it is that one big review. Um, which is, I think, why it didn't make it in 8.3. Um, but yeah, that's just the, I don't think, I don't, I don't know if place block is the only module that potentially won't exist once it's stable, that it would just be in the block. I don't, layout, uh, layout discovery. Yeah, layout discovery also is yeah. going to be a system yeah. module. Field layout. Field layout. <laughs> So I, don't, I yeah I don't know if I don't know if if there should be different workflow for those kind of modules that that we're not planning on them being a permanent thing because I think in a lot of those isn't there going to be at some point a big if if they are moved into another system isn't there going to be a big code review anyways I'm not sure like feel like yes <laughs> there's gonna I don't yeah the, even once we finish the module and it's done it's gonna all three of those field layout field discovery are you sorry. Field layout, layout discovery, and block place uh, are intended their future home is somewhere else. As mm -hmm. instead of being, they're basically a set of alters, yep. alter hook form alters and whatnot. Yep. Um, and yeah, when we rewrite them to actually go to the place that also needs code review, um, because we are changing more actual core for once, yep. um, even once the rest of it is considered stable. Um, and yeah, you still so you still have that giant one lift and shift at the end. One more question. Anyone maintaining distributions or modules that rely on core experimental modules to work? Yes, you? <laughs> you have the migrate tools and stuff? Yes. To relying on migrate? <laughs> and Dick, you're working on, okay. Yeah, because the, so that's a problem that's been, uh, that's been an issue around layouts and workflows at least. And it's been a driving force behind media to get the media module stable in core initially instead of experimental and just the media library to be experimental and not the media data management thing to be experimental because it's as long as there's contributed modules that need to rely on your stuff for distributions, they will have a very hard time if they need to rely on, uh, a stab on unstable experimental things in core. And that was a lot of argument around in the layout scene and there was a thing that the media team wanted to avoid at all cost and it took half a year now to try to avoid that problem so it's it's been a lot of cost to the media team as well so we've only heard from experimental module maintainers and core committers yep. and part of the experimental module process is trying to surface that to other people so maybe like it would be good to hear from people who like is this actually surfacing anything to anybody or is it not so if anybody has an opinion on their experience not being involved in actually making the experimental modules, but either seeing them or possibly using them or thinking about using them. That'd be good to hear also. Um, just a quick observation on my Migrate Plus Migrate tools. Today, I mm -hmm. opened 8x-4x mm -hmm. for both those to be compatible with Drupal Core 8.3x. I've had a new major version of those contrib modules for each core minor version because the migrate API has kept uh, evolving. Yeah. I really, really, I, I am motivated to get this stable for 8.4. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't need to maintain the branches. That's what, that's what the, layout mod, the layout ecosystem does as well, is that the uh, display suite and panels, they're making new branches for new core versions. Uh, I don't maintain any of these modules, but cool. uh, as, as somebody who tries to, um, like I have a patch on CDM that um, Wim, I don't know where he went, but like is providing me some really great feedback on and it's, you know, that kind of high level review that, that seems consistent there. And it is a long process, but at the end of it, you know, 
uh, getting feedback from people who are really good and mm -hmm. have a lot of experience is super helpful. So I get what's slow about it, but I think some of this belies some of the stuff that infrastructure team is going to be working on about like it's hard to like you can't at mention people in the issue queue mm -hmm. right so like and which i get is a, is a thing and all of that but like i think some of this gets speaks to just problems with the tools that we're using of it would be way easier to get quick early feedback from people if you know i would imagine the core committers have trouble just finding out where they're needed because the tools are so Sometimes limiting yeah. so like I, I don't know where those discussions are happening, but like if we moved to GitLab, you know, a GitLab instance or something like that, that I know they're talking about maybe doing, I feel like it would be easier, even in Contrib where it's like, I just need a little bit of access to like smart people who run some of these projects to move things forward. So just an mm -hmm. idea. Okay. Aaron, do you have Daniel on there? Yeah. Is he has anything to say? <laughs> on my hangout? Uh, am I going to try to join again? See what happens. Yeah, Daniel, hi. You want to say something? Good evening. Nice to see you. Oops. So I missed uh, the first half of your uh, presentation, but uh, what I heard were some uh, questions and answers, some nice uh, suggestions. Um, what I was interested about is um, what would happen once an experimental doesn't make it. In my form errors was the first module that was considered to be removed. Um, and it was said that we should move it to country if uh, it failed, but um, yeah, luckily it. we passed. But I'm interested what would happen if it gets in country? Any experimental module? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I did not talk about that. So, um, so yeah, in that case, it could move to Contrib, and then whatever the uh, and then people can take it on and take ownership and then do whatever they want once it's in Contrib. So then from there on, it's it's. A, any, whoever takes it on. It's similar to what happened to like blog module and other things that have been removed from core. Okay, that's clear. Um, well, what I liked about keeping it in core is that, especially for inline form errors, it touched so many aspects of Drupal um, that it felt like it was easier to change all these little things to make the big thing great. Uh, and if it move to contrib I think it would be really harder to, to fix all these small things in core to have this focus um, under one and for inline form errors it's all in one uh, meta issue and uh, I think 80 to 90 percent of all the issues were already core bugs and I think it would really help to keep it in core to well just make core better and then get inline form errors more stable so but All right, thank you. Any other feedback or concern or suggestion for improvement or based on your experience? Um, I, th I think it's uh, it's nice if things are not in contrib. So if we would skip uh, experimental mos modules and say, okay, we develop everything in contrib. Um, I think getting credits for core is nicer than getting them for a contrib, so maybe it helps uh, well, getting people to join, develop for it, because, well, it's for a broader audience. Um, yeah, maybe that. Um, on the other hand, it feels kind of sluggish that we have so many uh, experimental modules now in core, so I don't know if there's a possibility to have something in between, say we ship Drupal only well, with, with out experimental modules and then with composure we can say our oh, def requirements are there there are something like that all right okay um thanks I, do you want to stand up to the mic okay we have another person here yeah hello i'm josh i work at acromedia and we build a lot of e-commerce sites and talk to a lot of people about building sites more than we usually build and um 
we don't enable any of them, any of the experimental modules because they're experimental. Mm -hmm. But uh, we see them, and from my perspective, seeing it in core really helps me as a developer when I'm in a meeting with clients, with sales, communicate where core is going. Uh -huh. That's really helpful. Right. Migrate, I consider it stable, <laughs> whether it's alpha or not. <laughs> um, even if it's changing, because core changes too a little bit. But I guess something I'm thinking about, you know, we have this problem, we need people to use things that are experimental to push them forward. If we're warning people three times when they're enabling a module, maybe we could encourage them as well to please enable this module and give us good feedback. Mm -hmm. Go to this issue queue, maybe work on some of these issues, get excited about it, because it's a big platform we're giving them, putting them in core. And we can use that for good, not just for warning. Yeah, there was some discussion. There, there was some discussion on having a dev slash live toggle that way you can say this is a dev site, so please don't warn me about these things. This is a live site, please warn me about these things. So uh, that would help. Uh, I don't know where it's at right now, but that's been one of the proposals that could help with this. All right, so. Thanks everyone for being here and I'm glad we've had all this great feedback. Thank you for the discussion. Thanks. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you. Goodbye.